Hi, my name is Jason Rosenfeld. Welcome to your next InDesign tutorial for Creative Suite 6, creating a web comics template. Let's get started. Click File, New, Document. We'll stick with the document preset of default with the intent to print. Number of pages 1, start at page number 1, leave facing pages checked. The width and the height will be a regular letter page size. Columns, gutter remain the same. Margins we will change. Unlink. Go to the bottom margin, make it 0 .7, 0 0.75. Press tab. Bleed and slug we leave alone. Click OK. Now we see that our top and our side margins are 0.5 and our bottom margins are 0.75. In the next part of our lesson, we'll talk about creating the panels, meaning 2 by 3, in the master pages. To create the panels in the master pages, double click inside of the master pages area. Don't just click once, because then it's not entirely clear which area that you're in. Double click. That's the best way to do it. Now each panel in our 2 by 3 arrangement will have an outer and an inner frame. We start by clicking on the rectangle frame tool. Click right there on the corner of the margin and we get the rectangle dialog box. Our measurements are 3.7708 by 3.2705 inches. Click OK. Now we copy, Control C, edit, paste in place, noticing it's Alt Shift Control V for the keyboard shortcut. Now we have two of these frames. Let's go to the grid and make sure that our XY coordinates, which are here, are relevant to the center of the frame. Now, with that second frame still selected, we can reduce the width and the height together, making sure that the link is selected. I use my down arrow key. And now I have an inner frame that is proportional to the outer frame. Click the Move tool. Click on Empty Space. Zoom tool. Click and drag. Let's make sure that our, our frames are, are tucked nicely into the margins corner. Control A to select all. And then we can use the Move tool. Go down one. Go to the right one by using your arrow keys. Left arrow key, up arrow key. Terrific. Everything is tucked in nicely. A nice feature of InDesign is that you can also click View, Grids and Guides, and make sure that Snap to Guides is checked. Click Away. In the next part of our lesson, we'll talk about adding stroke weight to our rectangular frames. To add stroke weight, make sure that your rectangular frames are selected. Select the stroke panel. We'll choose a weight of 2. Let's align these to the outside. Right now they're aligned to the center with this one selected. This will align them to the inside. This aligns them to the outside. I prefer the outside because I like my panels completely clear. For the type of panel, for the type of uh, stroke, we'll choose a dashed stroke. For the dash, we'll choose six points with a gap of two. This can all be changed later. Again, while we have everything selected, choose a color of red for the stroke. In the next part of our lesson, we'll talk about duplicating the panels inside of the master area. Now that we've added stroke 
to our rectangular frames. We zoom out, make sure all of the panels are selected, control C for copy, edit, paste in place. Let's send these duplicates rightward. Shift, rightward arrow. Now, I'm not concerned just yet with aligning these rectangular frame edges to the margin. I'm mostly concerned with making sure that the, uh, the outer panels are tight next to each other. Control, uh, sorry, type Z, zoom in, and this time holding down the shift key, I click, hold, and drag, and I make sure that they are right next to each other. Perfect. I also have to keep an eye on my margin. It's easy to place things. It's easy to create objects which are just slightly off, but it's an easy remedy also. So we've got the first two which are right next to each other. Now I zoom out, control zero. I zoom in on that far edge. I overshot the mark, no problem. Control zero, control A to select all. I zoom in on my midpoint anchor, which is right here. I'll zoom out just a little bit so I can see what's happening. If I have all of my rectangular frames selected, if I click, hold, and drag on that midpoint anchor, I'm resizing all of my rectangular frames simultaneously, like so. But I want to make sure that they are right there on the margin. I'll also adjust, I'll zoom in and make sure that the top parts are inside of our margin as well. Good, now that's fixed. Now let's duplicate the first set of two. Control zero zooms them out. Control A make sure we're make sure we've highlighted all of them. Control C, Control Shift Alt V to paste in place. Now here's a neat trick. What we do next is add the height of the object. This being one whole object in the mind of InDesign, as long as they're all selected all at once. We take the height of the object, control C, click inside the Y coordinate, and add that measurement of 3.3261 inches to the Y coordinate. Press Enter. And now we've got a perfect placement of frames 3 and 4 underneath frames 1 and 2. Let's repeat that. Control C, Control Shift Alt V. Once again, copy the height of the object and add it to the Y coordinates. Remember Y is up and down and X is side to side. Terrific. Next, we zoom in on the bottom margin uh, once again, we've overshot the mark. It's easy to miscalculate. It's easy to draw any sort of object slightly too big or slightly too small. But again, it's easy to, it's easy to remedy. Control A, make sure they're all selected. Grab hold of this midpoint anchor with the move tool. Click, hold, and drag until you pop it right into the margin. And all six of your panels are shrunk uh, evenly and proportionally. So now we've got a perfect one, two, three, four, five, six uh, panel page. In the next part of our lesson, we'll discuss taking these panels and putting them on the facing master page. To duplicate all six of these panels and put them onto the facing master page, it pays to think ahead. I discerned in advance in advance that this corner on the x-axis is at 16.5. Why is that important? Because if I select all of these, control, uh, sorry, control C, control shift, alt V to paste into place, if I take the right corner of that object and place it at 
5 and press enter, I've got a perfect placement. This is 16.5, 16.5. This way I don't have to take time uh, moving the dock, moving the object, possibly misplacing it just ever so slightly and then having that mistake snowball all the way throughout the document as I create it throughout the coming days or weeks or months. In the next part of our lesson, I'll show you how to do something called frame fitting. And frame fitting allows you to pop illustrations into your frames proportionally and effortlessly. In order to perform frame fitting, make sure you're in your master pages. Select all, control A. Next, object, fitting, frame fitting options. Under content fitting and the fitting drop down menu, choose fill frame proportionally. No cropping, click OK. This prepares us to go to our regular pages. Double click. You see that everything we've done in the master pages is reflected in the regular pages. And we know that this regular page is based on A master because we see the A in the upper right hand corner. In the next part, we'll show you how to finally place the illustrations into your new comic book pages. To place our illustrations, File, Place. I'm going to go to my Andy Hero Illustrated Draft 003 folder, and I'll start from panel 14. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll leave my show import options checked. It adds a couple ex extra steps, but I feel it's important. Click open. For each panel, you get a preview and the option to crop to art or various other choices. In my world, I stick with cropping to art. And now I would click OK six times altogether. Now we have what's known as a loaded cursor. And if you look closely, you can see the number six. Now click direct, directly in the center of each panel. And you see the countdown happening on the loaded cursor. And the images popping in and filling the frame proportionally. Let's create two more pages. One, two. Oops, I didn't want number one to have these panels. I can, choose, I can take page number one and put it down here instead. Now number one, page one, is blank. And we see it here on our screen. Page two is here. Page three is here. Regular page one. This time, I want to put a full page spread of one panel. For that, I go to my rectangular frame tool. From the beginning of the margin, top left uh, corner, to the bottom right corner of the margin, I create a rectangular frame tool. Again, file, place. This time, I go to panel number 20. Show import options is checked. Click open. Crop to art. Click OK. Sometimes it doesn't pop in properly. No problem. Choose your move tool. Wait until it becomes a, the hand tool. As you can see, it changes. There, dead center, you find your hand tool. Click once, and you get the border for the picture itself. This is not the same thing as 
the bounding frame. That's different. You can see that the bounding frame is in blue, but the picture frame is in brown. Object, fitting, fill frame proportionally. And we'll repeat with page three. File, place. This time we'll go to 113 through 118. Hold down shift, click on 118. We're choosing all of them. Show import options is checked as usual. Click open. It'll stay art as long as I don't change it. And again, click, 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 click. Oops, why did this one come in so small? Because when I clicked, I accidentally dragged. And InDesign assumes that I want my picture frame to be that small. Well, I don't. Control Z to go back a step. I get my loaded cursor again. And room. There we go. In the next part of our lesson, we'll talk about changing the master pages for different types of views. Let's return to our master pages. Double click, select all, control A, and let's make our dashed lines solid. Change the weight to maybe 0.5. And instead of red, black. Now return to our regular pages, and we can see frames, which are a little bit more traditional. Type W, and now we get a print preview. If you want to print this to Adobe, File, Print, Print Preset is default. The printer should be Adobe PDF. For right now, we'll do all pages because there's really only three. Click Print. And now we have our PDF file. Control-0, page 1, type the page down key, that's page 2, and page 3. Thanks for watching.